my name is Julie Stead. Um, I'm married to Paul. We live here in uh, Gloucestershire. Um, we've got three grown-up children now in their 20s and they live away. So it's just us at home now. Um, um, I'm a pharmacist. I work for a large uh, company, um, but a very small. In, I work in a very small pharmacy in a local village, and I'm the resident pharmacist there. And I've been there for more than ten years now. And I'm. My name is Paul Stead. I'm. Um, I've been severely disabled now with MS, multiple cirrhosis, for a number of years. And I'm confined to a wheelchair. I've suffered with MS now for um, 20 years, and it started with just numbling in my numb, numb feelings in my hands and feet, and tingling. And I gradually got worse and worse until I couldn't walk anymore, and I kept falling over that many times. Um, I decided that I needed to get into a wheelchair and I've been in one ever since. When we moved in here we had um, some help from a lo local architect and builder and we had various adaptations made to the house. So that included, um, we had to have wider doorways to allow access of the wheelchair into the rooms. We had to have some walls moved in fact. Um, and it was the bathroom facilities which were the, uh, the, the biggest mm -hmm. um, Thing we had to do. Um, we had to have hoists um, installed to transfer you um, to the toilet, the bed and the shower. Um, so yes we've had a lot of a lot of work done on the house to make it suitable for you. I have various electronic aids on the wheelchair including a possum um, device that has all the remote controls in the house adapted to into it and I have a head switch which I can nudge to select whichever icon I want to answer the phone or let somebody in the front door or turn the radio on and off turn the television on and off or um, turn the lamps on and off in the sitting room and bedroom um, it's a very, very useful gadget. I also have a Kindle for reading books now because my eyesight was failing, it's failing. And I found that reading books has become too difficult, so with a Kindle I can select the print size that suits my eyesight on that day. I've managed to read two or three books without a problem. Over the years um, we have uh, approached various organisations for help and of those that we did approach, um, pharmacist support was the one that actually did the most and helped us the most. Um, it's probably about 10 years now that we've had help from them and uh, the staff over the years have been brilliant, haven't they? Um, the first lady came to our house and um, interviewed us and uh, helped to sort out our finances on paper and um, we've had help from them over the years in buying various large pieces of equipment which we couldn't have afforded on our own. Um, that's included a, a rise and recline chair which you needed and is still in use even now. Um, you use every day and um, most recently with the help in, in getting our, our adapted motability car. This is a car that his wheelchair is able to access into the front passenger seat position so that he can travel next to me whilst we're, we're driving along um, and the adaptation was very very costly to, to do so um, we yet again approached pharmacist support and uh, they again came up trumps and helped us with the much needed money to allow this to project to go forward. We've now had the car for about a year and uh, we're delighted with it. Because the charity manager ca came to our house and was talking to us, um, she was able to identify things um, that came out in conversations uh, between the two of us that um, she felt that, or she could identify, 
we, we needed help with that we perhaps hadn't realised at the time. So um, it was absolutely fabulous. Yes, we, we didn't realise um, and we were pleasantly surprised that um, I, because I was the pharmacist, I hadn't realised that the charity would help my, my husband's uh, physical needs and needs that he had um, because of his condition. Um, so once that was um, that became clear, everything um, was a lot easier, and ev everything happened then. So it was just really the, me the message that it, the charity helps the partners and other family members. The support that the charity have given us um, over the, the ten years um, that we've been accessing it has made our life a lot easier a lot better, a lot more manageable, and a lot more enjoyable. So I would actively encourage anybody who needs similar financial assistance or advice to contact Pharmacy Support, because they are a wonderful organisation. They will help you uh, right from the start. David Gams. Uh, well, I, I qualified in 1983 and I've been a pharmacist ever since. In 1979, I'd, I'd made the application to university and things were looking really, really good because I got a place on pharmacy, which was, well, there was a thousand other applicants and there was 70 places then. So I'd actually got a place and things were looking good and suddenly the whole world looked like I was dropping off the edge of a cliff then because suddenly I was diagnosed with MS and things I was thinking well the world was my oyster and all of a sudden I was in a shell sort of thing and things well I just didn't know where to go but the specialist said to try and do the degree to try and you know to try and do it he said there's nothing you've got nothing to lose you know I had to disclose then to the university that I've got it which was a good thing in a way because they let me stay at the student digs you know more than one year because they wanted to keep an eye on me but aside from that I got no no concessions aside from that so I did it myself and I passed and I passed whatever and I got I got to the end of it and I, and I got it in 82 and then you know moving on to the pre-reg I got in that as well but luckily it wasn't disclosed to the pre-reg so I'm thinking well that's why I did it on my own merits rather than any anybody saying oh he's got that you've got to be careful so then I got a job with Kingswood which was a chemist that used to exist down south in the 80s and I got a job in Hastings which wasn't the greatest place but it was a job so I went all down to Hastings on my bike as they say to get a job but within three months they writ to the, the university to take up the references and unfortunately the, the, the university disclosed because I disclosed to them to, you know, that I, that's enabled me to stay in the student digs. As soon as that happened, well, they took me away from Hastings and took me, they moved me to Brighton by putting me on welcoming sort of things, well, relief management they called it, which was basically driving around the shops doing a day there, a day there, as people know. But for me, that wasn't the greatest thing because it was a new environment every day. It was driving to London, M23 every day, which knocks it out to you. It was doing the, the eight-hour shift and then it was coming back again to base and doing that, which wasn't, for me, the greatest thing because even for normal people, it's a bit of a strain. They give me a job at PPLS. Well, it wasn't a job, it was just that they, you know, send you around on low comes. And then I did that for quite some time, obviously, but there was no risk because nobody knew. And that's the only, you know, that's the way I was working because it was totally in the background. Nobody knew and I was only there for a day and nobody would find out either. 
because I could manage your day without any problem. Nobody would say, well, hang on a minute, you know, you're not walking so good today or anything. They didn't know me. So I did that for quite some time. And then that changed my life, I suppose. Because then I'd lost the tag of being MS. And I could just apply for jobs and actually get them. You know, without disclosing, without them finding out. thing was I had so many rejections from the state saying no you're not entitled no you're not entitled you know no you're not entitled to carers no you're not entitled to ESI no you're not entitled to job seekers it was kind of totally depressing and then farmer support come along and it was a ray of light you know for the first time I felt that somebody was interested in me I wasn't just a number somebody to get rid of somebody to dump it depends also I kept the phone on which enables me to try and claim the benefits and uh, well I'm in mobile so it does enable me to phone people and it's also I'll put food on the table yeah and they do say you know that they will help in other aspects as well if anything goes wrong I can always phone and they are kept in touch which none of the none of their agencies keep in touch they never phone you whereas pharmacy support you know they, they phoned me even yesterday you know, to ask I've, I've, to chase my DLA, dis disability living, which I'm not getting. So they're going to chase it. So, you know, I feel like somebody's been on, on my side and I haven't got to keep banging my head against a brick wall. Uh, well, my son, it's, it's enabled him to carry on with the football and the karate. And I know it's only two pounds a week for the football, but that would you know, that, that, that's a lot now. You know, without that, I think he would have resented it more to be trapped here looking after me which he does do and well if you're a pharmacist you're entitled to this and there's nobody better to help you than pharmacy support.